I'd like to uh, ask the uh, brethren that are sitting up there to, to do me a favor, and perhaps some of the rest of us out here too. Um, would you mind summarizing, for the sake of some who might not have been able to be here up to this point, summarize the 1888 message in terms of what the gospel wants to do, uh, what the gospel can do in the life of an individual. In just, you know, a, I know that's oversimplification, but I think it would help some to be able to focus this in our minds. All right, it's not an easy question, so I'm <laughs> not making any comments. Uh, perhaps you all three would like to have a part in this. This will be a short answer. <laughs> that same question was asked at Ontario in December. And I stood and said the answer. The 1888 message is to prepare a people for translation. And that's the bottom line. A people who will walk out of this world straight into God's kingdom. These are they who keep the commandments and have the faith of Jesus. That's what this message is all about. Now, the brethren can talk more words. Well, this is a good challenge, and I don't think I've memorized the words, but I would like to recall the first three sentences that Wagner published in book form following the 1888 conference itself. He quoted Hebrews 3, verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Then he said, if one will do this intelligently, considering Jesus, looking at him just as he is, that includes the nature of Christ as well, see? This will transform him into a perfect Christian, for by beholding we become changed. Amen. And I think those three sentences sum up the entire 1888 message. There's a high priestly ministry, there's a nature of Christ, there is beholding the Lamb of God intelligently and responding, and the result is perfection, Christ-likeness of character. I'm going to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17 and 18. Now the Lord, that is Jesus Christ, is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, I think you say glass here, <laughs> the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. I think that uh, the big question that has to be answered in the great controversy is can God prepare or produce a people who love their Savior even more than themselves? Can God expose you to Satan and to the world and say, here are my people? You can test them, you can try them, you can persecute them, you can starve them, you can't kill them, and see if they will turn their backs to you. And I believe that, that the three angels message, the 18 message, was to present to our people the matchless charms of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we would be so much in love with him, that on the one hand, we would have discovered in him the f salvation full and complete so that we are no longer worried about our own destiny. We know that in him we stand secure. But more than that, we are willing to go through anything rather than let him down. And I believe that God is going to produce a people in these last days who will say with the Apostle Paul, who will say with Moses, as he said, 
blot me out from the book of life, but forgive them. I would, that I would be accursed that my people may be saved. Can God produce a people who are concerned about others more than themselves? And I believe that the 1897 has that ingredient in it that can produce it. Because once you confront Jesus Christ, you know, you have nothing else left to live for. The things of this world become strangely dim. And I believe that's the message. Uh, I believe it gives us peace, it gives us assurance, but it gives us a burden, a burning desire for me to live is Christ. That's how it was the 18th message to me. You will know when you have assimilated the vital es essence of the 1888 message. And that is when you feel yourself so impelled to take this message to others that you will know no peace as long as you are not doing it. And I believe that this will be its result in your life. There will be the same fiery, burning desire to help others to see this truth as there was in the first century disciples when they could not keep silent. We are reminded of the words of the Apostle Paul when he said, Woe is me! I preach not the gospel. Something has to take a hold of you to have that burning constraining of Jesus Christ. And I believe that in this message is the vital ingredient that will do exactly that.